Hey, yo, it's The Building Downtown. You can follow us on social media at The Billion DT. You can follow, subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, talk show, wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm your host, Jason Kelly. You can follow me at MMA. My co-host, Kro Kosatsky, at Kro Raps. My other co-host, Amy Barton, at Ames Bell. So as many of you know, well, if you do or don't know, our show, the audio host is Talk Shoe, which you hear me say in the intro of every single show. A talk Shoe is controlled by a company called IOTUM. I'm going somewhere with this, so hang on. Our today's <laughs> guest is the chief marketer for IOTUM, Dora Bloom. Thanks for joining us. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited for you, uh, for you to join us as well. And like I just mentioned, uh, I've been using Talk Shoe now since... Oh, probably 2011, something like that, and never switched over to anything else. I think I tried one other thing for a combat sports show I used to do for maybe five episodes, and it sucked, so I went back to talk shoe. So we're going to start with talk shoe, but before we get into that, just so the uh, the listeners, viewers are more familiar with who you are, just let them know what your role is at, I- at IOTUM and exactly what IOTUM does. Yeah, for sure. So IOTUM, I am the chief marketing officer, and um IOTUM is a communications company. So we actually have a few different brands that we uh, use our technology for. Um, The first one would be freeconference.com. It's been around for a long time. It's free conference calling, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And then uh, CallBridge, it's an enterprise software conference. It's really easy to use. It's WebRTC based and similar to Zoom. And then there's TalkShoe which is, you know, you know all about TalkShoe and we'll talk yeah. a little bit more about it. Yeah, definitely. And TalkShoe just had some uh, big changes, like a whole overhaul to the platform. What prompted that after, like I said, I've been using it now for about a decade and there's been little changes here and there, but but this is by far the biggest one I've seen. Yeah, um, I mean, TalkShoe was founded in 2006. So um, it was, you know, early in the podcasting days and um, it was used mostly for radio personalities to you know, do the radio show and then also broadcast over the web. And um, IOTUM acquired it in 2016 with all of these big things in mind. And um, so we purchased the company and we never really did very much with it. And we always wanted to leverage our video technology so that people could not only use, uh, you know, create podcasts that they could stream over the web with audio with their RSS feed, but also with video. So that's kind of part of what we've introduced this year Yeah. in the first quarter. Yeah, there's been a ton of changes. And I know at one time there was a paid, you could do a paid membership as opposed to the free with the free that offers a lot too. I want to get into some of that. Is the paid membership still a thing? I didn't notice it on there anywhere. So we don't have any paid plans currently, but we are going to start offering them. And we're thinking that's going to happen later on at the end of the year. Um, There will always be a free subscription. So Mm -hmm. don't worry. (laughs) And you're, you're a legacy um, (laughs) user. So you're, you're all good. Okay. (laughs) nice. (laughs) Yeah. um, We're rewarding the, the users that are using us now. Um, with that free membership and there will be some paid uh, features uh, in order for podcasters to really d- dive in and make some money. Yeah. What are the, some of the fa- paid features? Would it mean that you get bumped to the front page or? Yeah, I mean, uh, that could definitely be part of it. We haven't actually built out those paid plans yet, mm-hmm. um, but it, some of the things that we're thinking about are you know, better analytics and monetization features. So you could either remove the ads from your podcast itself, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, kind of pick your pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll programmatic ads. Okay, and with the mm-hmm. analytics too, there's a, a lot more. I mean, before all it was was a number under the episode. Now there's all kinds of things, and there's filters and everything. But for me, anyways, and for some other people I know, these talk shoe, there's still some bugs. So are you guys still in the process of working out the the analytics? Yeah, we are. So. Um, I mean, we'd love to hear your feedback, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's the whole thing. We, we really wanted to launch it and get people using it so we could understand where the bugs are. Okay. Because without the without the data and without people who have listeners and who have shows, um, you know, we, we just, we can't see it. So mm-hmm. if you can imagine, if you have, if you don't have any listeners, your data is completely blank. Yep. So when I'm in a test account and I'm testing it, I can't see anything in the analytics, mm-hmm. but for you guys, your analytics account is probably full because of all the listeners that you have. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was used, I was going through the filters and it was funny that when I first noticed the biggest thing, first of all, and a friend of mine, actually, he already spoke to like a customer service representative and the mm -hmm. individual show stats or something that's coming back, which I'm happy to hear. But yeah. Uh, yeah, when I go through the filter, it'd be funny. I like, I do all episodes and run it a certain time period. And I think the number was like 43. I was like, well, that's incorrect. So I ran it for a longer period and the number went down to like 29. I'm like, how is that possible? Huh. So I knew there was, you know, I, you can yeah. tell it's, it's not fully functional yet. So I was just wondering, you know, exactly why you explained, right? Why you would roll it out before it is fully functional. Exactly. We're, we're really trying to, um, you know, get all that data in there in order to understand, uh, you know, the, the daily listens, the weekly listens, monthly, um, you, and where people are listening from. If you ever need a profile to put on a main page and see how it works. Or... <laughs> sure. I'm, I mean, we're we, can put, you, we, we can put you on the main page. I mean, I, I pick those shows that are on the main page. So I got you guys. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to the dev team tomorrow. Don't worry about it. You'll see it. That's awesome. awesome. That's I'll awesome. let you know how everything works. Now, you know? Yeah. 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 Exactly. No. I, you know, uh, just like you guys are interviewing me now, yeah. I would love to interview you guys and send you a survey and see what exactly you guys like and what you don't like. Uh, let's not talk about what you don't like right now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're joking aside, if you do ever roll out beta stuff that you want, you know, feedback before it's released on, we're happy to tinker. Certainly. Awesome. That's Certainly, that's something it wasn't until fairly recently. I used to be like, I'm not filling out the survey, I'm not doing that, this, whatever. And, uh, yeah. YouTube was sending out a survey recently for creators and I mm -hmm. kept dismissing, dismissing, dismissing. And then I was reading an article about how important that is, right, for the actual user. So I'm like, oh, I should start filling these out and giving feedback because it does actually matter. I always just was like, ah, oh, it's falling on deaf ears. There's no point in me wasting my time. But I oh, realized no. more and more. They recently, read it. We yeah. read it. We read every single comment. We like we want to know what you guys want. We're building it for you. So mm. it's important. How does that differ? Because obviously being a marketer, you run a lot of ad campaigns and stuff like that and, and promo campaigns and stuff. Mm -hmm. But is this a little different because you're actually you're not looking for new customers, you're looking for users of the platform. Does that differ the way you run you, you come up with a campaign? Um, no, I mean, users and customers are kind of all all the same. Um, it really in terms of we haven't really been running too much marketing campaigns for talk mm -hmm. it's really self-sufficient um podcasters need somewhere to host and uh talk has a name out there already mm -hmm. so we haven't really been doing too many marketing campaigns we go to podcast movement every year have you guys mm -hmm. heard of podcast movement no, no. So what's that it's it's a large podcasting conference uh it takes place in different places all over the state Mm -hmm. And um, I actually was at uh, their smaller uh, conference two weeks ago in LA, and um, there's one in August. It's going to be in Dallas, and it's really fun. There's tons of podcasters there, and you just talk to them, and network. you know, really get to know, yeah network, get to know where they're hosting, what the features are that they're looking for, and um, so that that's where we've been really heavy with our marketing. But other than that, it's it's kind of word of mouth. Um, have you been to the middle of Texas in the middle of summer? <laughs> uh, I haven't. Not in the middle of summer. I've been. I've been to Dallas in May, but I. I know. That's great. I know. <laughs> you know, a ca Canadian girl in the middle of Texas. I'm just gonna burn. Just right. not right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I and actually, Amy, Amy has a background in marketing and stuff like that, too. So I'm sure right now, probably most of the questions I'm going to ask Amy's like this dumbass. I could answer these questions. For you. So uh, it's, she's going to be our expertise. She might actually come up with some expert questions here. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. back to uh, what was I going to say? Oh, ad campaigns. When you're running an ad campaign and looking at things like that, um, I've done them on very small scales before. Nothing like you've done. Right. Just trying to figure things out. Well, how do you pay attention to what numbers mean the most? Like how, how do you determine what's what and what try to target what you're going for to figure out right get make the numbers translate into sense yeah i mean that's that's a really good question um before i do the ad campaign i ask the question why am i doing this ad campaign uh you know is it for awareness is it to gain uh free users is it to gain paid users um is it to get people to upgrade is it to uh you know retarget people who have been a been to our website and we're trying to 
get them to then sign up. Mm -hmm. There's, it just depends on what I'm trying to do for that ad campaign. And then obviously it will translate from there. And that's the major KPI that I will look at. So, um, I mean, for example, with retargeting, if, if people come to talk to you, but they don't sign up and we do retargeting, the biggest thing that I want to see is them then sign up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same with uh, free users. If we're targeting free users, we want to then um, target them, you know, maybe offsite or in an email or, uh, you know, all of the above mm -hmm. in order to uh, then, you know, put the different campaign messaging into their into their head, you know, the 20% off or whatever it is, and then get them to then upgrade to a paid plan. Mm -hmm. So we'll stick with ads here for a second, but I just mm -hmm. want to ask, because you just said this, do you guys have a harder time as a broad general statement, converting pay uh, free to paid or getting the initial sign up? Where's the bigger hurdle for you? Um, so it depends on the product, right? Because I, I, I'm talking in general terms, I'm talking about the three products that sure. I manage for IOTM. So free conference, free conference, normally what happens is they come into the funnel at the top of the funnel and they're a free user and they can be a free user forever. So um, I would say converting them to a paid user is a little bit of a harder hurdle um, because it, it's they, they can use it for free forever. So you really have to push those paid features and they have to need them. Um, whereas CallBridge, I'm looking at uh, a two week free trial. So really I have a time window, but if they don't convert within the, those two weeks, it's not, you know, the, it, it's harder to get them to sign up off the bat, I would say. And then TalkShoe, we only have the free plan right now. Um, so it's, you know, we're, we're basically giving out candy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, okay. Um, candy. Yeah. Good candy, it, I like it. <laughs> Sorry, go on. It, I mean, it, it's a good platform. So um, it kind of just sells itself. What were you going to say, Carol? I was just going to, um, I kind of lost the thread there for a second, but it was, <laughs> it was something along the lines of uh, what you're marketing right now. Do you know if there's, uh, let's say, how different is it from uh, marketing something physical, let's say a PlayStation or something? Because uh, this, this is not, it's not really a product you're selling, is it? It's a smaller service? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. It's, it's software as a service, it's, um, and it is it, it's a whole other uh, within marketing. It's completely different than a physical. It, it's it's like it's not like they can like add something to their cart and then abandon it, and then we send them an email about it. <laughs> it's not e-commerce. It's 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 very different. Um, but it, I feel like the online world has changed, and there's a lot of pros out there and there's a lot of reading material and uh so it, it it's easier it gets easier every day and i would say within the last seven years that i've been at, at iota it's gotten easier for me because i've learned our products and i've learned about our customers and um i know what they want and need and kind of how to pull them in without having the paid membership in place now and for years right uh, how does talk should generate money to cover costs <laughs> I actually, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking this. I emailed, I had a problem uh, about, I don't know, probably 2015, 16, something like that. And I logged in one day and all my numbers were gone. So I emailed them and they told me they can't retrieve them. And I was furious. Oh my goodness. Right? And uh, so the show I was doing at the time, it was called Rear Naked Choke Radio. Anyways, uh, going back and forth with them, finally the person emailed me back and said, you know, we're doing the best we, we can, but you got to give us a break. This is a free service. Right. And it kind of made me think mm -hmm. like, I guess, yeah, you know, it's not like I'm paying 50 bucks a month or 40 bucks a month and I'm like, I'm paying hard money for this. Right. So how do you guys cover costs? Because you got employees and everything else to cover. Right. Absolutely. I mean, um, it's those other brands that kind of cover TalkShoe right now. Uh, TalkShoe is not a money maker right now for us. It's it's. Um, but we're hoping that it will be one day. So um, that's why we're kind of holding on to it and continuing to market for it and continuing all of our customer service efforts and our emails and um, ensuring that our customers are happy. Mm -hmm. So um, the customer service agent that you talk to, um, we do have one person who is dedicated just to talk to, but uh, we have- One a person? 
one person who is a customer service representative for TalkShoe, and then we have um, a, a bunch more that are on our other brands. But our other brands often end up helping out with TalkShoe. So well, yeah, really, it's, it's the one dude, <laughs> the, the lonely warrior there. Yeah, yeah. I, many, I mean he he's how really. Users, how many users is on TalkShoe? So uh, in terms of um, accounts we have or in terms of podcasts we have over twenty-five thousand podcasts but in terms of um active users currently we're about 2500. Oh, wow. that's, that's okay for one guy to handle that's okay for one guy to handle. <laughs> <laughs> right what are the uh so what's the plan with talk shoe as of now i mean obviously you said that there's changes that are going to be made but like is it is iotum's plan to make talk shoe into one of the you know the what's the uh oh there's a big one i can't remember their name now they do a bunch of podcast stuff it starts with an a i've never never used them it's probably i can't remember it but yeah you guys is it that's the thing to be like one of the big platforms or is it still going to be you know it's kind of like feels like it's like homey like you know what i mean it's probably because it's free but but you know what i mean it, it's comfortable there but uh, is that the plan to be like you know one of the big major competitors in that area yeah, so that's what we're hoping for, but we're a little bit different. And so um, the big thing that we've launched is our creator studio. So you guys are using Zoom right now. He needs yeah. to stop using <laughs> Zoom. I was looking at it too. That took it's... way longer than I thought it would. Uh, it's actually pretty neat. I want to I want to tinker with a little more. Like last yeah. week when we had it scheduled, but we didn't get it done. It was, uh, you know, the day of trying to figure it out and do everything, I was like, how no, do I don't we, want to rush How do we become the front man of this thing? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do we lead this? How do we lead this? Uh, in, I'm going to use you guys to promote us going forward. So get ready. Uh, I'm all for <laughs> you want to be on the front page? I'm all for <laughs> that. We can even be <laughs> the Billion Downtown brought to you by Talk Shoe. There we go. We'll, we'll, we'll work every go. day, too. But yeah, sorry, Dora, <laughs> you were explaining uh, what, the, what you guys are going for. It's going to make uh, Talk Shoe a little more unique. Yeah, so I mean, to kind of bring it back, talk to you, we're trying to make it so that you can do four things. The first one is create. So that's our creator studio. Um, and that's where you can invite guests to record from anywhere, similar to what Zoom does, but it's right there in your platform. Um, they can dial in, they could also just video in, um, but then they, you can also stream live if you wanted to. So you could be streaming live right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, and then your if you want your live feed can also go right into your RSS feed. So that's that's great and that's really unique. Um, and you could stream live to YouTube or just stream live to your talk shoe link. The other thing that we do is we auto transcribe your po podcast. So you get a transcription afterwards of your entire podcast that you can then put on your website or your blog um, and use it to generate, you know, for SEO. It's got all the things that you've talked about in it. So that's create. The second thing that we're trying to do for our users is help them be heard and get discovered. The whole thing with talk to is that, uh, you know, every user has a voice. Mm -hmm. So um, be heard and get discovered. That's, you know, you can host and you can store your podcast for free, which wow. a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of other hosting services don't do that. Yep. You can also distribute and syndicate to all the major platforms like you guys do Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, so the best part, you don't have to be tech savvy. It's just, it's really easy to plug your RSS feed in there. It's just built for instant aggregation. And then the third thing is to make money. You, that we can put ads on your podcast and then you can make money. It's mm -hmm. pretty simple, right? Yeah. We have an ads partner and they just get put right in there. And then last is the analytics bit. So, um, you know, the, you can see who's listening and where they're listening from and what device they're listening from, all that good stuff. As far as the creator studio, have you got any feedback on it as of yet? Uh, yeah, so video conferencing, and audio conferencing is what we do like that's yeah. that's where that's our money maker so that's how iota in general makes money yeah so our our entire platform is built off of user experience users experiencing it and then giving us feedback and it is so simple to use and i know a lot of people are getting that zoom fatigue and um, just because of the pandemic and everybody's on Zoom meetings, they call it, let's hop on a, uh, on a Zoom call, Zoom right? Zoom call, yep. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, just our entire platform is built a little bit differently, but it's so easy to use mm -hmm. that it's it's super intuitive. Mm -hmm. And when you're you're you know you're basically I don't want to say rebranding, but pushing the brand, trying to make the brand bigger. And you see so much of these your competitors on Facebook, social media, Instagram, wherever their advertisements are everywhere. How do you go about building a, a strong presence online like that, where you know you'll constantly be seeing promoted ads all over, aside from paying? I know you can just pay and they'll pop up, but there's obviously a person like your position. That's not always effective. There's a too. yeah, there's a strategy when you do it, right? You don't just put your credit card number and be like, please God, right? So what uh, how do you go about building that presence? Or sometimes you do do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes that's where you start and that's okay. I mean, you kind of have to test it and you have to see what works and what doesn't work. In the beginning, it was, we, we just took things and threw them at the wall and just saw what sticked. Mm. And that's, that's okay because then you just refine, refine, refine. And I feel like all marketing is really like that. You need to, um, it, it's not just like you set it and forget it. You have to always be changing Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even if one ad worked, you know, last year at a certain at this time, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work this year because mm -hmm. the landscape is always changing. So it's important to just look at the analytics and look at what is there and, you know, read the data and see what's working and what is in A-B testing, ensuring that, you know, you're always trying different things. Mm -hmm. Amy, that's like, you've told me so many times when I talk to you about this show or past shows or Krill's music, it's always, you're like, just try things. So throw, throw somebody on there, or if you're going to do it free, whatever, switch it up, even down to things like um, switching up the way the titles of the show are on social media, right? Like it'd be all, all the words would start with caps. And she was like, try it a different way. See what happens. Look at the analytics, see what works, see what doesn't. And that's how you do it. I feel like even then, like I've had some successful, like I'm trying to post my music, let's say, right. And mm. I, I'd be successful posting a dog video and dubbing my music over it, you know, <laughs> getting, getting, getting say 2,000, 3,000 views, right? And then similar videos, similar hashtags, similar everything, and it's not getting even close to it. You know what I mean? It's, I feel like yeah. it's a very, very frustrating world. I think that yeah. I think that's the biggest kept secret that is not a secret in marketing is that there's not really any magic. You honestly just have to try things and then do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And that is really the most layman's way you could put it, but that's what you're doing. It's true. And dog, dog <laughs> videos and cat videos and baby videos always work. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the common mistakes? I guess either one of you guys could take this, but Dora, what are some of the common mistakes that, that people make? Like Amy, you just said it, right? It's like the best kept secret, but really not a secret. Right. So what are some things that should just be common sense, but people repeat making like mistakes or, or you see this, you know, somebody make it over and over again. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people do, um, they'll just design an ad and put it out there without a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And you should be thinking about who you're marketing to and what the goal is to like, what the call to action is, what, what you actually want them to do. Mm. So if, if you want them to sign up for a newsletter or you, you want them to sign up for your product or you want them to pay, th these are all things that you have to think about before you actually create that ad. So it has to also be visually appealing to that particular person. Also targeting is really important. So you wanna make sure that you understand the persona of the person that you're trying to target and, um, kind of get into their headspace right mm. well it's fair to say too though that like another one of the common sense things that gets overlooked so often is the call to action no matter all of the things you just said because people on the internet are lazy and distracted and if you do <laughs> not tell them what to do they will not do it yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people also like they when they write something they write it they try to add in all these words and like make it sound really smart but people aren't going to read shit people yeah, don't right. want to read they literally <laughs> just they literally just want to be able to look like at what? something and like digest it yeah. especially mm -hmm. in today's world right i mean that's why tiktok is yeah. so popular it's got gonna... everything in one place for you and you don't have to think <laughs> I was about to say these TikToks and all these platforms with the infinite roles, right? They, they literally train humans to to have the information delivered to you within 15, 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. and bang, if, you, bang, if, bang, if, bang. If, if that 10 seconds wasn't or first five seconds wasn't interesting, it didn't catch you, it's gone. 
Oh yeah, mm. people. Five during... seconds is generous. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it, It's got to be quick. I mean, there's um, I forget what the study is, but there was a study that was put out. I, I can send it to you afterwards, and it was um how the the younger generation is now um, dreaming in the same format as TikTok videos. Uh, <laughs> if you analyze the way that their their brains light up when they dream, Holy it actually shit. like their their brains. Like, that's how they now think about information. Imagine now kids that are trained to receive information that way. How complex and hard would it be for them to receive, say, a lecture in World War II? Oh my God! Yes, yeah. <laughs> in a lecture hall for three hours and listen to one guy talk. No, but I'm just saying right like that all, yeah. all it, it literally dumps people down oh certainly certainly yeah the way the way there, information is given to us sorry go ahead attention span it's their attention mm -hmm. span isn't there anymore just like how i just interrupted you my attention yeah. span isn't there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now it's true though because i mean i'm not even like huge on social media but it's impossible to escape right uh, other than posting this mm -hmm. show i don't spend a lot of time on there but i can easily be like Oh, I got a retweet on Twitter or something. I wonder who it was. Open it up. And then next thing I know, I'm on my timeline for fucking 15 minutes. Oh, just yeah. scrolling, looking at nothing. Nonsense. It's amazing how oh, they yeah. can keep you so locked into it. And it's just little spurts of people saying things, right? It's it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with talk show moving forwards, I know in the past there was um like a lot. I don't I should shouldn't say just in the past. So maybe people still do have business meetings on there and conference calls and things like that. Is it going to be pushed as a, as a place to still do that or more for a podcast hosting solely? Um, I mean, they can, but they can always use freeconference.com for that. That's mm. it, it, it's, it just has more of the features probably that they want. And the interface is, mm -hmm. is uh, you know, the past and post meetings and the way that we store things is it's just a little bit different. Mm. So it, it would make sense to use that but it, i mean if, if they want to use it they can yeah in the oh, past sorry you go ahead i'm sorry i was just gonna ask i mean i don't i don't mean i don't mean anything by it i just want <laughs> to this is the best gonna be way good. to start yeah no no, no because because uh the company or the the, the the service or the app that you just said the freeconference.com right does that do you, do you think that name affects your marketing because it seems like it's a mouthful Question. and a long one you know what i mean because when you say zoom zoom is done right it's sort of catchy and then freeconference.com is sort of yeah. is there a shorter name catchier name <laughs> or... i mean the the free word is very powerful though yeah, yeah so i mean the keyword too when people well, go to I, the reason i'm asking is because i'm building all kinds of ads too right so <laughs> i'm thinking maybe, you know what i mean maybe this name is what i should go with instead of looking for short and ringy names so it, it's one word too and it gives them it gives them the website in the word so that's uh, freeconference.com has been along around for a really long time and like free, freeconference.com was actually developed for those party chat lines oh back in the God. day so, <laughs> wow. yeah, really? yeah this is before video like this yeah so oh, a terrible place that was <laughs> oh i remember those those commercials were great Wow. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I probably have one laying around for freeconference.com from a long time ago. But yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's easy to remember. I know it's long, but it's easy to remember. Um, and it and is it's, it's the URLs there. Tells you what it does, where it is. Exactly. Right? So. And not, not to mention the keyword free conference is, uh. it's, like within SEO, it gets about 200,000 searches a month. So um, the amount of traffic that goes to that website is because mm -hmm. uh, that's what people are searching for or were searching for. It's it's a, it's changing now. People are looking for video conferencing more and more, more and more. Mm -hmm. and is um, I'm assuming free conference call will be secure. But on talk show, if somebody was to have a business conference call on there, is it secure? It is. It's it's it the is. same security. So um, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, 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 the encryption is it's all encrypted. It's mm. um, the actual encryption is escaping me, but it's um, all of our developers are local too, which is great. And um, it's WebRTC technology, so it's not an app. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually right there in your in your uh, Chrome browser or Safari browser or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an app, but uh, it's all based off of WebRTC technology, which is extremely secure because it has to be updated on a regular in order for it 
uh, you know, all of those browsers to actually allow them to uh, use the extension to get into your microphone and your camera. So, uh, mm -hmm. to the back to the analytics for a second on platforms like YouTube, on uh, Spotify, you know, you could do it obviously on social media. You could buy fake followers, fake views, fake <laughs> listens. Is that a thing people can do on TalkShoe? No, I not enough. So. I'm not looking yeah. to do it. I think it's the corniest shit, but. Yeah, I didn't think you'd be able how to do would that. You, how would you stop that? Because uh, uh, fake views and fake comments and all of that is being generated by fake accounts that are created by bots, right? So mm -hmm. how would you how would you prevent bots from attacking your system and just giving it a thousand views or a thousand comments? Yeah, so all of our analytics are actually aggregated from our ad platform, um, and they can actually tell the people that are listening pre and post roll so they can make sure that it's it has to do with listens i mean comments i can't really say i'm sure like you can always do fake comments yeah. you just create your own fake account exactly go and go say it, thumbs right? up. <laughs> yeah but um the actual data and then the data is not public too so in the back end why would you want to create fake i guess maybe if you have sponsors or something but and they want to see it yeah it, I mean, that's fraud. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and couldn't a person, you know, a sponsor, especially, I'm not talking like Jimmy's tire shop, I'm talking like a corporate sponsor, especially, wouldn't they be able to tell looking at your analytics if these are fake? No matter what um, platform it's on. And how do you tell? <laughs> coming at you with questions. No, sorry. It's I'm, because like, right now, I'm currently, let's say I'm currently promoting a video, a music video that I've made, right? And uh, there's offers. And these people are saying, well, we'll give you so many views for so many dollars, right? And they do look real. How would I defer if they're fake? I mean, it's about going with the trust. You're paying platform. for them. That's how. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm paying for marketing, right? And, and then the person is telling me that these views are real because it's being marketed somewhere and advertised. And it didn't come in over a second. It's not like I just paid and it popped up. It mm -hmm. took a couple of days, but they were climbing pretty steady. And we looked into analytics. They look pretty real, but I don't know how to determine. Should I keep going with this or is it fake? Yeah, I mean, it's about look, it depends on where the platform is. I, I mean, if you're advertising with like an influencer, I would look at their reputation and, you know, who, who they are. And um, you can look at their followers as well and see if they're actually real people. I find if you click into somebody's profile and you start scrolling and it's, you know, all cam girls, you know that yeah. they're bots. <laughs> where, whereas if, if it's, you know, it, if it's you can see if it's a real profile or not so it's about doing your research and but you know understanding there, who you're dealing with do you know if there's anything in like an actual say youtube analytics where you could go and say and be like oh yeah these are shit these are fake you know what i mean or is there within is youtube really? analytics i'm not sure but there i can tell you like youtube is is making sure that they're giving you correct analytics they're they're not gonna um yeah the, they, they're not going to be able to is, tell exactly who is who are bots and who mm -hmm. isn't, but they can definitely uh, th they're giving you correct views. I'm almost positive. I, yeah. I can't speak to YouTube, but uh, in terms of talk show analytics, it's it's what we've seen might be pretty real. Then. Yeah, huh. that's good. Yeah, that's like there last last year, <laughs> all through the spring into early summer. I don't know what kind of stride we hit, but we were doing anywhere from or the overall channel, just the audio on, on talk show, anywhere from 700 to a thousand listens a day. And this was going on for a while. And That's I was great. at first, all three of us were like, something's <laughs> wrong. Something's wrong. These, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not getting my hopes up because I know one of these days I'm going to log in and it's going to go way down. And it just, it went up and up and up and then stayed. And then we were off for a few months. So we kind of lost that stride. But, um, so there's to answer our question, because I looked and looked and looked, I'm like, I'm pretty sure those are real. So those were real, legit listens, views, hits, whatever it, it on talk shoot or our yeah. RSS feed. I, should say. Is that, I mean, I can. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a few hundred now. Yeah, like uh, it goes up. Sorry, go ahead, Dora. I can have somebody dig into the data a little bit more for you. I like uh, cool. off of the, the the top of my head. I don't know because I haven't looked at your analytics. But yeah. if I if I can uh, dig in a little bit more, I well, that'd be will cool. be able to tell you a little bit more, especially because you can see like where they're listening from, the state, the province, country. Mm -hmm. If they're all coming from, 
you know, somewhere in China, they might not be real. <laughs> yeah. the, like the, I mean, I would look at like your show is probably listened to mostly in North America. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's funny, too, because every once in a while on all platforms, too, I'll look at the analytics and I'll see something like, oh, we had one listener in Iran last month. It's so funny when you see these oddball places. Yeah. With one no, listener. Our, our hike happened, too, because we, we started out and we did a lot of battle rap shows and stuff like that. Very specific. And then we did uh, Effie, right? Yeah, yeah. We did Effie, talk. who's a police officer, and she's going through a major lawsuit. So that was a pretty hot topic. And it, it mm -hmm. seemed like right after that show, oh, the, oh, the yeah. spike happened. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah i mean she she like, might have turned on some listeners to you as well right because yeah. it, it seemed like a boom it seemed like an explosion you know what i mean yeah right across the because platform we, we didn't do anything but kept doing shows and the views just kept coming i think guests on your show are probably the most valuable advertising yeah, that you can get right because then they're sharing to their network so we, we should just have more cops on more cops <laughs> more, yes. more law she's a, exactly she's a, she's a cop going against cops so that's even that's an even hotter topic right you got a police officer going against police officers that that you know treated her in a certain way um can you get banned from talk shoe yeah you absolutely can yeah. um yeah i mean not for anything that's freedom of speech or anything but we've had uh you know people in the past who um have been racist or yeah. so that that's that's when we would then you know kick them off and uh we have you know a, a letter that we send them and racist. make sure that they oh, understand yeah. sorry is it racist i mean the kkk podcast yeah no, like white supremacy is it um is it, no i mean like is it in terms of one statement during an hour-long podcast or is no. it like having an hour-long podcast dedicated to <laughs> yeah but we're 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 talking like a, a podcast that <laughs> yeah, is yeah. racist yeah well wow. and yeah. how do you guys pick up on those do they have to be reported to you or is there is there it's uh, manual. It is. It's, it is manual. It's so is that, one do, do. that one guy is so busy. <laughs> no, yeah, no, so, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, reporting is reporting is good too. So uh, the, we always look at the reports. But yeah, that one guy is very busy. So <laughs> hey, <laughs> there was security. two for a while. So shout up, shout outs to Jeff and Dave who do an amazing job on the back end and yeah. helping us to um, you know answer everybody's questions and <laughs> as well as pleasing the site and making sure that we keep it uh i mean not pg but just you know good for the general public and good for the world yeah exactly you don't need to discuss oh, it's stuff definitely been there. good they're doing a good job yeah what were you gonna say amy uh it's nothing important <laughs> <laughs> um so what kind of content right off the hop would not be allowed obviously racism i would assume well actually Obviously, you mentioned cam girls before. I'm assuming none of that on the video. But what if somebody had a podcast that was about the porn industry or something and had porn stars on there and taught that would be all cool, I would assume. Yeah, yeah that's something fine. like that. Yeah. But um, as soon as you don't start turning the video on, as long as you don't turn the camera on, <laughs> we do have um, when you create an account, you can you can uh, put your rating in there too. So making sure mm -hmm. that it obviously is rated R so that anybody under 18 can't listen to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah, it's important. A good, a good thing to follow that too. I know people that tried to get away with stuff saying on YouTube that it's made for kids because you make more money if the content's made for kids. And it's like, F this, F that, and the thing. And I'm like, you idiot. You think YouTube's not going to pick up on this? Yeah. yeah, you get shut down pretty quick. I tried. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, they're definitely transcribing everything too. So they, they as soon as the F word comes up, they know. <laughs> <laughs> that auto transcribing is so touchy oh my god you you YouTube? can't say nothing can't do nothing yeah if you want to advertise or something it's it's yeah. very 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 didn't very, you just have yeah. your last music video taken down where was that it wasn't of... taken down they didn't allow me to advertise because they said there was too many war images and for some reason they thought that i'm trying to that's gain, gain fame of war or something mm -hmm. well yeah just... there was news clips his last video we made it's it's there's news clips of the war going on in ukraine I and am Ukrainian, right? So I made a song about it. Right. So and, we uh, made it look like uh, like I made like an animated like TV to look like a 24 hour news channel. And it's just news clips going off. And YouTube sent him a message and said that basically what you're, yeah, you're trying mm -hmm. to profit. Off He's war. trying to profit <laughs> off war. So they wouldn't yeah. let him, they wouldn't let him advertise on it. Wow. Well, uh, also, like it, it is it's not a person probably reviewing it. It's it's yeah, you know, yeah, a bot. It's, so, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that auto transcribing, that's something when you mentioned earlier, I just got sad because back in the day when I was doing combat sports stuff, mm -hmm. I would do I would do a show. I'd have three guests per show. I was doing two shows a week and then I would take those shows and I would turn each guest into a, like a feature piece, not just like Q&A. I would turn it in like a whole article with quotes and stuff. So I would be sitting there every <laughs> night just listening and transcribing. Got to the point I was like a stenographer <laughs> and uh, man, auto transcribe. And I used to go to, to websites and stuff like, oh, they do auto transcribing for free here. And you run it through and the words are so incorrect that yeah. I could not use yeah. it. I would my love favorite that. part about that was that he also was transcribing all of my shows. Yeah, all oh, of my shows too, <laughs> which was one a week, three guests per show. Oh my gosh, you yeah. were busy. So I was you were like, just like play, pause, play, pause. Yep. Wait, I didn't catch that reverse. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. He was Dave. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that. I was Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one man band, like the guy I talked to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, did, I did that four hour interview once and that's it. That was my career. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we <laughs> never did. again. We did a four hour show once, yeah. we did it four and a half hours once. Do you have a time limit wow. for live streaming? Um, like live broadcasting shows on talk show? No, no, there's there's no time limit. I mean, maybe 24 hours or something. But if you give us notice, we can make sure that, that <laughs> the 24 hours could be waved over. So Is yeah, there, the, the, I, four hour next one. I no, no, I won't be there for that one. Um, I found and I'll be honest, I personally have not tinkered with talk shoe in years, uh, mostly because Jason was doing all of that in our former lifetime. Yep. But when, <laughs> this when, <lifetime. laughs> when I did at that time, I felt like the biggest competition, direct competition was blog talk. Yeah. Do you yeah. still feel that way? And no, I don't think blog talk is our biggest competition. Um, there's a lot of hosting services out there. It's, it's really, really saturated mark. So a market. So that's why I, we've, we've tried to put in that differentiator of the recording studio in there and really, you know, set, in order to set ourselves apart from the rest. Mm. But, um, I mean, if you want to name some of the competitors, there's like <laughs> Spreaker, Blueberry, um, uh, yeah, those are like the two, that, that, two main. I've never us, even heard of them. Us is your really? front men. We're going to be taken over. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <We're coming. laughs> nice. I, I like that attitude. I, I, I'm into that. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, man. We're not looking for competitors. I get obviously because of, you know, uh, the algorithms, how they work. I constantly get uh, offers and ads from, from competitors. And I'm just like, get the hell mm -hmm. out of here. You know, it's funny. I always say already purchased. So this way the ads will go away, but they only go away for a little bit of time. And then they pop back up. I just go right back into the thing already purchased. Go away for a while. I mean, they know, you did, I, they know you didn't already purchase. I know, I know, back. but it's the only way to get them to leave me alone for a little while. Oh God. Well, there is a way to say, I don't want to see this ad again, actually. I, and will I it not come back? Yeah. If you, if you actually flag it, you can also go into like your ad preferences uh, oh. in your browser as well and change them. Holy shit. I didn't know can that. Can you turn them off? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't think you can completely turn them off. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, with IOTOM's other companies, I assume uh, you're just as involved with them as you are with TalkShoe. It's like, are you the chief marketer for, well, you are the chief marketer for IOTOM, but there's nobody under you that like you delegate, like you take care of free conference, you take care of this, that, whatever, or are you, you're like, no. the umbrella takes care of all of them. Yeah, the umbrella takes care of all of them. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of people on the marketing team um, who help me, obviously, with mm. everything that we do. So we're a graphic designer. Our, uh, we have a content creator who does all of our videos, our social media. We have a copywriter, SEO, um, and then a paid ad specialist. So there's a, a bunch of people who um, are behind the scenes, but we all deal with all of the brands in order to really um, use our our major strengths across mm -hmm. the board on all the different brands. So do you guys, does the team ever split up? Like you guys are going to go work on this project for this platform. You guys are going to work on this project, for this platform, or is it kind of like the whole team stays together till this task is done. And then we move on to this task, no matter what the platform. We work on all brands every day. All the time? Yeah, all the time, constantly. So, except, um, except for that one guy and talks you. Except for that one guy talks you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 
there used to be two um and one of them actually has a show his name's dave cooper uh, you can search him on talk show he he's got a show with a good follow following you have him on next year. behind it next? yes <laughs> see what it's like to handle the whole thing by yourself when you're, you're uh <laughs> yeah you obviously have a budget to play with like how do you i mean now you're you've been at this for a long time right but at the beginning even was not there any sort of nervousness like you know, I don't want to just piss this money away when you're delegating that they're forming the team, delegating tasks to the team and then spending money on ads and everything. Like, was there some nervousness that you're not just going to, you know, throw the money away? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I worked with, with Iona for a long time, so I didn't mm. start as a, uh, as the chief marketing officer. So yeah. um, I actually started as a freelance uh, project manager for them. Uh-huh. So um, I've been under a lot of great leaders who I've, I've seen do things and, uh, you know, try things that work and try things that don't work. So I've been able to see, you know, just learn from them screwing up, not, not that they screwed up, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah. and then, um, and then, you know, from there I've refined my method. So now I feel a little bit, I'm more comfortable within the role. And I feel like when I make a decision to spend the money and do the research and it's an informed decision. So it's, it, it makes sense for what we're trying to do. I saw someone on your LinkedIn. It was like a former, uh, coworker or something said something like Dora can build a, uh, a killer marketing plan from inception to execution. So this i'm sure there's more in detail you could go but to sum that up how do you create a killer marketing plan from inception to execution what goes into that aside from you know what i mean i could google that right now and it's going to tell me like five <laughs> or six things and i'm like that's common sense but really what are the, like the unique tools techniques things that you apply that make that a, a reality i mean it, it ties back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the call in terms of just understanding your audience mm-hmm. and then understanding what you want them to do um, so that, that, that's what you start with. And then, um, you know, once you look at all those things, then you would look at the different channels or platforms where you can advertise on, um, and then you make sure that you're targeting across, you know, as many platforms as you need to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of the time email gets disregarded as a platform. Um, really? so I, I think e- email marketing and newsletters, I don't think they're dead. I th- when you're when you actually pair that with a, a few other things mm-hmm. it's it's actually very powerful because it sits there in their inbox and they can always go back to it if they see an ad online and then they're like oh like you know maybe i'll check that out and they click it and then they go somewhere else and they they might not remember your name they might not be able to you know go back to it whereas if it's in their inbox they can just scroll and find it where, where chewy would be a great case study for that who would chewy chewy what's chewy you guys not have Chewy up there? It's like the no. Amazon. <laughs> it's like the Amazon of animal products, like dog foods, prescriptions, toys, okay. furniture. I've heard of this. Yeah. Do they okay. do a lot of email marketing? Oh my god! I mean, like I'm a an avid customer, so I appreciate it. But if I wasn't, <laughs> I would be yeah. absolutely infuriated. Bed Bath sure. Beyond, Bath and Body Works, all of them do it like that. That what same. Else? Yeah. I, I mean, it it works better in the U.S. too because the uh the laws with emailing aren't as, as strong as they are in Canada, but yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Quill. Where, I was going to say, where do you get the emails? The user has to give up the email, right? So you have to interest them enough to give it up. Yeah. It was they, um, what 2017 when they brought that new law in Dora. I remember the place yeah. I worked at, uh, I worked at a brokerage at the time and uh, we had to have a meeting about it because we were building a thing at the time and a big part of it was getting people on a mailing list and then following them with a MailChimp. So yep. uh, we had a meeting about how strict it was. Like you could get in serious shit. I think it was late 2016, maybe 2017. And yeah. uh, in the meeting, they were saying like Canada, there's strict, there's strict rules on uh, emailing. It's much, much worse than anywhere else like the United States or anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's called castle castle re- regulation. Um, so yeah, you, you have to, you have to get their permission to email them and they have to, and that permission does run out. So you have to make sure that you continue to get permission if you're going to email them. Mm. Um, you know, and if they're using your product that normally gives you permission. Um, but 
Yeah, you get their emails by uh, telling them to sign up for your newsletter and giving them um, things that they want. If they, some people are interested in eBooks, some people are interested in uh, newsletters. They want to know when your next podcast is coming out. So th <laughs> those those are things that people want. So they they want that in their inbox. So you, th that's when you email them, and then you just put a little ad in there too to you know, tell them <laughs> buy something purchase something <laughs> um what uh you've been with ionum since what the late 2000s something like that yeah yeah uh, so wow <laughs> what what like after you know finishing school getting into the, the marketing world um what uh like what made you pick this industry or was it just this is where you landed it worked out so this is where you stayed yeah i mean it, it it's a little bit of both. I didn't start in this industry. I started in experiential marketing, which is event marketing. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So, but for more for products and uh, services. So, I mean, uh, I did that all throughout university. Um, and then I was a coordinator at a, a company and I did that and worked my way up. And then um, it's a lot of weekends and it's a lot of evenings. So I kind of just, um, I did some freelance for IOTAM and then I, I liked it. So I stayed and I liked the business and um, I saw it going somewhere. They had a good vision. Um, I think software as a service is, it's, it's all online, it's all digital. So it, it, it's, it's a really fun kind of online they, they had, you could work remotely. There's, there's a lot of perks to us working for a software company. I've got a quick little question. Since we're talking about your experience and things you've done, um, we, I was doing a little research on you before having you on show, obviously. And, uh, there was something about, uh, music. Um, it was a big word. Do you remember that word? Uh, anthomusicology. Yes. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Cause it's, we Googled it, it and it was like, <clears throat> Krill, Krill was reading off his phone and he's done. I was like, well, that's clear. <laughs> what it's, the hell? It's, it's just a fancy word for world music for, um, and the psychology of music and the, the way that, uh, music. I understood uh, something music. about ethnical music of. Is yes. Great... So you study like re religion and music and the way that they use it within their culture and their religion. And as well as, you know, the, I mean, anybody you can look at, you know, even ravers who go to raves, mm -hmm. it's almost like a religion. So it's, it's the way that music affects your world so and vice was versa. That was that just a little moment of passion or were you? <laughs> it, it was. Yeah. Um, I I was a music theater major at an art school in high, in high school, and then oh, wow. I went to, I went to university and I did arts and contemporary studies. Um, it's a really general BA. Uh, it's you kind of you can study whatever you want. It's great. You can take whatever courses you really want. <laughs> um, so I took a lot of marketing courses, of course, but um, I took theater courses and I took a lot of music courses because that's what I was good at, and so. Uh, when I finished my BA, Broadway or marketing, and then you lean towards marketing. <laughs> I, so I'll tell you, if I did Broadway, I would not even have made the first audition because <laughs> that's, that's not even a thing. I was not good at that. But in terms of like the the looking at the theory of music or the way that music works in the world, that's that's what I was good at. So um, yeah, I did a bunch of courses, and then. I needed maybe like three more courses to get the post grad, so I was like, "All right, I'll stay an extra set, uh, an extra semester, and get the post grad." So, nice. want to manage another project? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you sing or play instruments or anything? No, not really. No, not really. <laughs> okay. Well, just being that deep into music, I thought you might be like, "Yeah, I got a whole basement full of instruments." <laughs> no, I, I mean, <laughs> I dabble. I'm not good at anything, so don't ask me to play anything. <laughs> <laughs> Go get your clarinet. Yeah. <laughs> um, where was I going now? Um, I forget. But one <laughs> thing I wanted to ask you about is the uh, Talk Shoe Studio. That doesn't exist anymore, does it? It doesn't. Um, not at Stack Market, but we actually have one in the office. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So we're, we're building it out a little bit more. 
going to be open during office hours if you guys want to use it. I know That'd you guys be cool are... to come check out sometime because I remember yeah. seeing the one, the, the other one that was around and I thought, oh, man, that'd be neat to go check it out sometime, do a show from there, whatever. This is when I was doing probably when I was doing combat sports. But uh, yeah. So uh, how does it work? You rent it or is it just you book it or? How does that... Yeah, so we haven't figured out the one in the office yet because we mm. just started to build it. Um, we've got some audio contracts for audiobooks that we're doing right now, but it's okay. just a small studio. We've got some really good equipment in there, but yeah, it's it's kind of just you, it. If you guys wanted to come check it out, you know me. Definitely, yeah. I have access. <laughs> we're in. You can come, <laughs> but if if other people were interested, they 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 could email and talk to us about it. Oh, that's cool. And nice. video capabilities as well, I take? Yeah, yeah. We, we got it all. <laughs> right on. So now we've got a studio. We've got the name. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of events were you marketing before? Like when you started off? Oh, like all like all kinds of events. So say yeah. um, a beer brand wanted to uh, do a golf tournament, we would mm -hmm. help host that and, you know, hire the people to work it and put up all the branding um yeah so th that type of event and you know all kinds even uh credit card acquisition events uh, i know through amy's marketing career she got to run across a lot of very famous very awesome cool people some of them dickheads but uh i've have you got to because you know doing things like that what you just mentioned uh especially event stuff did you get to run into anyone famous celebrities anything like that uh i met george st pierre once <laughs> I, I i have a i have a picture of me and him together uh we did an under armor event in um in new york for the super bowl when the super bowl was there wow and uh yeah george st pierre was one of the athletes that that's one of there. the coolest dancers you could have had here yeah no Canada. kidding <laughs> especially on this show <laughs> yeah yeah, um, I mean the podcast in the, the podcast movement. We um, they they always have cool guest speakers too. So it's mm. yeah, there, there there's a, a few. Is few there people. A, at that conference? Is there a, a lot of well known podcasters that show up there as well? Yeah, like yeah. So the one in LA that we just uh, that we were just at. Uh, Will Farrell was one of the key keynote speakers. Oh, wow. So he, he has a podcast. Uh, uh, you would be surprised. A lot of people have podcasts that you don't even know have podcasts. It's, I it's, notice that more and more every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I've always thought, because I, I thought this stuff was cool back when it was like, it's still considered online radio. You know what I mean? But uh, I just yeah. didn't have the guts to get into it until someone that I worked with doing work with on combat sports basically forced me to get into it. I'm glad they did. But <laughs> Um, even then we're talking like 2011 or something like that. It was getting saturated then. Right. And mm -hmm. even to this day, there's so many out there. I still have no problem with all the podcasts that are out there because there's just so many options for you to listen to different things, but there are some people I'm, I would never go out and publicly bash them, but I mean, celebrities or it's an athlete or whatever. And they're like, you know, my career is over. So I'm going to go do a podcast <laughs> now. And I'm like, you should not do that. Mm -hmm. You're horrible. There's actually two guys that started a podcast recently and both of them know how to be in front of a camera and both of them know, like they've been on stage and stages with tons of people around and everything. And these two are just brutal as hosts. Oh no. I watch them. Yeah. I'm hoping they no. can fix it. I'm just cloning. No, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> not a good look, man. And you think they'd be better, but there is a skill to it, right? It takes experience and time to, to really get, but some people it's like, I get what you're doing. And the sad part about it is, their terrible podcast brings tons of numbers because they're already a name, right? So they can yeah. stick any guest in the chair and their name already sells the podcast. It's true. It's true. But I mean, listeners aren't going to stick around unless they exactly. actually like it. So that's important. Say, oftentimes mm -hmm. those kind of podcasts, they just spark up and die out too. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah exactly. If the conversation isn't there. Um, all right, Dora, Absolutely. before we let you get out of here, is there any other things you want to touch on uh, either talk to or anything under the IOTEM brand? I mean, just check out TalkShoe, <laughs> TalkShoe.com. And um, I mean, if you're looking for conference calling as well, we have freeconference.com or callbridge.com. Mm -hmm. Check us out. And um, TalkShoe has a really good um, Twitter account with lots of really interesting tweets and mm -hmm. we share a lot. So follow us, uh, TalkShoe. 
Because shout out to Anton. Anton's who runs Talk yeah. to you, right? Yeah, exactly. shout out to Anton because he's the one that helped set this up. You got it. Thanks to Anton. <laughs> All right, you guys good? Did anything else you want to get in? No, this was great. Amy? This was good. Um, I did have one question. It's really irrelevant at this point in the conversation, yeah. but I'm I'm curious. <laughs> you know, you you touched on earlier, and we all saw it happen—the big boom with the pandemic and and video conferencing and Zoom specifically. But um, really, all of them did grow at that mm -hmm. time. What can you speak on? What like metrics you saw? Like everything grew great. Like on your end, did you see like twelve hundred percent increase? Like how much growth were we talking at that point? Yeah, it was it was a huge increase. It was uh, so to be perfectly honest, I was actually on maternity leave during the Lucky during you. the pandemic. What a so, great time for that! Great, um, no but it did like I I can see in the graph it goes like from you know and it's like and then right. it kind of and then it dropped back down. So it's it's not it's not where it was during the pandemic. Sure. It's back down. But yeah, we're we're talking. I think it was like four hundred times. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's significant. Yeah, it's quite a bit. And it wasn't only us. It's like it's like everybody sure. saw that lift. Um did some of it stay or did it drop back down to regular numbers? So it it's like in terms of like user acquisition, it spiked and then people kind of chose what they wanted. And then um, but so the, that's like signups. But then if you look at like the, the actual users using the product and like the revenue, it, it spikes and it, it does it, it comes back down because obviously there's some there's a little bit of churn lost users who try it don't don't want it anymore or that they go back to work or whatever it is. But it's it did kind of it's it stayed a little bit above. Nice. Wow, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, the pandemic really stirred up a lot. A lot and well, I've been curious. <laughs> I've not read actually that much about it, but I have been curious about the how far above pre-pandemic baseline it has stayed with the actual cultural changes that have come along with COVID and so many more businesses allowing mm -hmm. remote work that never did before. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, also there's a lot of uh, conference calling services that are just included within your within sure. your software. So, yeah. I mean, like there's Google Meet, which is included with G Suite. So a lot of companies will use G which Suite. Which is not great, but whatever. And then, yeah, and then there's <laughs> Microsoft. A lot of people will use Teams because it's already included. But so. they've started integrating Skype into that one. Yeah, yeah, the chat, their chat feature, which I mean. Also awful, but anyway. Skype is, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy how much uh, where I feel like it really stirred up is the telemed industry. Um, oh yeah, it's like it's like forty six times the amount, but like we're talking like billions of dollars. It's it's nuts. Right. So what we're in the what, we're in the wrong business, Dora. I know. Right? <laughs> Amy, where where what do you do in marketing? Where do you work? Oh, I don't. I'm a pastry chef now, but um, <laughs> uh, I, I like pastries too. <laughs> um, no, I, in my last lifetime, I had worked for um, Full Sail University, which is a college in Orlando, Florida. Um, I worked for various websites and then I went the agency route. So I have, I actually had a couple of software as a solution, yeah. as they like to say, clients. And um, it's, it's not the industry of choice for me as a marketer. Um, <laughs> It can be really, really hairy and complicated and and really, really niche and really difficult, um, which is not for me in in because I'm not a tech type person. I think if I spoke the language more more than maybe I would have liked that more, but it's yeah. a very specific market segment and I didn't play well with it. <laughs> I, I hear you. I I, I definitely but, hear you. <laughs> but I also was primarily in social media. So for me you know, depending on where in my career I was and where I worked, you have to, when you're client facing or customer facing, you have to yeah. speak the language. So when you're at an agency and you've got like uh, two lawyers and a home builder and a uh, an oncologist and, 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 you know, it's great that Aruba or now HPE was one of my clients, but I don't have the bandwidth to speak your language. Yeah. That's not what I do. Yeah, I know. That's that's why we do all of our marketing in house because it's 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 very gritty and like there's just so many technical terms that you have to understand. And so even for me being in the business for so long, it's it's taking me this long to understand kind of how things work and how things integrate together. And we have an API, and it's just like right, yeah, very technical. I don't. I think I, that's one of the very very specific marketing 
things that people don't understand why some marketers get paid so well. And, and that's, that's why, like, you're not, anybody can learn the basics of marketing. Like you, I can teach a, a rat to do a SWOT analysis, right? But like, <laughs> you're not going to teach somebody in 10 seconds, how to, how to speak the language in a very niche industry like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, especially t telecom and, and web is, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's a difficult industry that's taken me a long time to understand, but I feel, <laughs> I feel like I've got a grasp on it sort of and across the three platforms they're so different but they like they all use the same technology so it's easier for me to explain it a little bit right better. i mean to to easily more easily answer your question i still freelance my main my main oh. major client right now is a law firm otherwise Ooh. i spend my time trying myself not to be fat while making other people fat. <laughs> that's what that's, I, mean. I mean, that, that's, that's a great goal. That's <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how you do it because I would eat all those pastries. Well, you yeah. would think, you would think, but once you're around it all day, every day, it's really not that appealing. Don't yeah. you have to taste it? taste every batch though you sound like my dad <laughs> oh my gosh yes you do but tasting of taste in a batch is not the same as eating three or four of them true true you, it's oh. like wine you like can taste it and then like spit it out <laughs> I, I have the weird added benefit of like i really love making the shit but i don't like a lot i don't like chocolate i don't like okay. cakey things like there's a lot of shit we make that i'm like i can tell you by tasting this if people will like it and if it's good but that I would never eat. So yeah, okay. You're not maybe, like a sugary person. I, I am, but just not like pastry, bready, cakey things. And we do a lot okay. of that. So I'd eat all of it if I was down there with you. I know. Totally would. I would like murder person. it. <laughs> oh, and I'd have getting stoned and eating everything in their in your house. And the how only did reason sorry, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. You go ahead. I was gonna say the only reason I've never I've known Jason for what, like 13 years now. Yeah. Right and right. To this day, never has he tried a single thing I've ever made because the international shipping, I'm just not willing to. His dad, <laughs> his dad probably would drop a big buck on that if we talked to his dad. But he I was, was going to say, how do you guys all know each other? Uh, Krill and I met in like mid late 2000s when he moved here from Russia. Uh, we met through a friend of his, a mutual friend of ours. They were working together. But Amy and I, I'm from East Ukraine though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, I remember I remember you saying that earlier. So that's <laughs> how my husband's and he... Ukrainian. Oh, yeah. oh nice. So uh, that's how Krill and Amy know each other. And Amy and I know each other because we both worked in combat sports for many years, like almost a decade. And uh, oh. and a place called MMA Diehards. They were recruiting new people, and we got recruited at basically the same time. And uh, I mean, there were a lot of good people there. There were also a lot of people that not even that they're bad people. It's just <laughs> I had nothing to talk to them about unless it was work related. I don't want to talk to you. Um, but with Amy, it was different. Her and I just like clicked right away. And my life's been I, shit ever since. I was fuck you. <laughs> I was also I was also the only person in the entirety of the website and all of its subsidiary little arms that the owner would listen to. So I That's became true. The, I became the no, it was not nice. I became yes, the was. de facto translator, which oh, meant gosh. I befriended. Yeah. I still have two or three really great friends from that same time because because of that reason. Like yeah. I was the wait, 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 go to me first. Yeah. And then we all just kind of ended up being friends. And yeah. I and I got to a point. Them. I got to a point where um, I started as a contributor and by the, I got to a point where I was the feature content manager and uh, hated so, every minute of it, didn't you? Yeah. And oh, I'm right gosh. under the owner. Right. So him and I have to talk daily and like, it would just be, it wasn't a talk. It was a freaking war of swearing and calling each other names. Yep. Right. But not like, it's not like we hated each other or anything. No, but, it was like that. But, <laughs> um, so then it would be me bitching to Amy and then the owner bitching to Amy and Amy would be like, I, I, I'll handle this. And then she would talk to the like owner and we'd children. find a resolution. Like right. children. Yeah. I, that's, children. I mean, I feel like that's like that's office politics every day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you find the right person to talk to about certain things exactly. and then kind of yeah. Yeah, get them loves, to talk to the other Amy person. Amy loves hip hop. I love hip hop. We like a lot of the same rappers. <laughs> we were both into mixed martial arts and boxing and kickboxing. It worked out really well. Great. That's that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, yes. I'll I'll send you guys over the picture of me and George St. Pierre. I, oh I yeah, do lot, that. Yeah, do it. I look sure. a lot younger, but <laughs> are you kidding? You look young as hell now. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> I, it was not a compliment. I'm actually quite angry about this. <laughs> well, I can't see you, so <laughs> see, and now you know why. 
Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new ad sponsor for you. Maybe. Oh, maybe you know what? The Zoom, the Zoom filters. <laughs> Listen to her. Um, no, I did have another question, a real question. Um, for you guys, I know how some platforms do this. For you guys, when you go, oh, like talk shoe, it's all free, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, over here we can put in an ad or over there we can put in an ad or we mm -hmm. want to go that route. How do you guys or how would you match your ads to your shows yeah so it's it's um we, we that's where the analytics come in there's actually right. like a tab within the analytics where you can see where the where the cost per a thousand is sure. and then um the ad we, we use like an ad service and and they put it all in there yeah. so uh then the, they pay it out yeah but but not even like monetarily i mean like is it, how how would it go like okay we have an advertiser that wants to advertise low carb keto cereal. Oh, like, so are you matching those up with sports casters or like, mm -hmm. how are you placing them? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like programmatic ads. So mm -hmm. it's actually, you actually can't choose what kind of ads you want in there right now. Uh, yeah. But, but do so like, you guys choose for them or is it completely no, randomized? It's completely randomized. Cool. That's it. Yeah, right now it is. We're gonna get to the point that's like one of the features that we're like for paid, where we want people to be able to select the categories that they do want or they don't want. Say they don't want political ads or they don't want, you know, um, if we were to do one on communication, we wouldn't want other conference calls calling yeah. services <laughs> advertising on us, right? So yeah. I would be honestly so more, curious more to see. <laughs> The metrics on that though like the like especially like a click through once you give somebody the option to choose their silo that they want to be in yeah you know nobody knows your brand better than yourself so if you give them the power to go i only want this this and this i'd be so curious mm -hmm. to see how it changes the actual conversion rates oh i'm sh i'm sure it changes the conversion rates for the uh for the the advertiser but in terms of uh the podcasters they just want kind of a lot of the time a lot of any of the ads that they can get because right, right, it, right. It, it, they, they're not paid on conversion they're paid on listen so yeah. can you tell us or i mean i don't know how much of this would be proprietary or not but like can you give us an idea of like what a general you know how many listens tier structure the payment is in like is it like hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands or are you starting at like ten thousand a day to get like a decent ad on your show ten thousand an episode is normally what it is yeah yeah it, it's not per day it's yeah it's episode ten ten thousand is like is considered like a, a decent podcaster mm -hmm. per episode and you said you have what twenty five hundred or twenty five thousand podcasts on the yes i mean we we have currently podcasting we have we have around there like that are like podcasting on a daily basis the, the like, no not daily it. but active yeah so out of 2500 how many of them hit 10000 per episode do you know a lot or off the top of my head no not not that many i don't know an exact number but i would say like you know uh, under under 100 of them mm. do you have or do you know if you have any like <laughs> Maybe it's not Will Ferrell and maybe it's not Rogan because these guys all have deal deals, mm -hmm. but yeah. like so-and-so actually started on talk show. Like, do you have any of those stories? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, we've got a few. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> page. Um, so in terms of started, let me just bring it up so that I can look because I want a lot of things in my head. Uh, let me look here, bro. So um, mysteries abound. I know that one did. Oh look, they changed my front page. It's annoying. <laughs> um, <laughs> See so another cool thing about the creator studio. I noticed when I was in there taking around, you could share screen. I know you can on Zoom as well, but uh, I want to look more into that creator studio. Uh, it might be something that we might start using by next show or the show after. Honestly, I can, uh, if you want to schedule a time, I can just demo it for you and show you all the cool shit. That so would be awesome. It's, yeah, it's yeah. It's really easy for you then to use, and I'll just like show show you how to use it. And then okay, maybe cool. a couple of marketing it. tips after that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and no, you, have to, cool. you have to use them after she gives them to you, Carol yeah <laughs> we're we're here to the, help our users i, I mean i anytime that anybody reaches out and asks for help i'm all yeah that'd be cool definitely help. i'll um we'll get that set up the next few days for sometime next week or the week after Perfect. that 
Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. I can do the evenings too if, if you need me to. So awesome. just, just let me know. Thank you. Cool. Also, oh, one other, yeah. just off, I'm curious. <laughs> a, a Joe Rogan, right? Like, so that's a, a, a totally different ballpark, right? But mm -hmm. that's, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding it and him since he is signed with Spotify. Um, yeah. If you had a podcaster, A, like him with less, way less listenership, does he just kind of fly under the radar? I mean, does he have all these problems on a talk show with a smaller fan base or do you catch those even at that level quickly? I mean, we believe in freedom of speech. So I like, I, I don't want to say that Joe Rogan is right or wrong because I mean, who, who am I to say that? <laughs> but, um, it, it's, it, yeah, he would probably just fly under the radar. Mm. Uh, there, we have, um, we actually uh, did a blog post, wrote a blog post about how Neil Young yanked his music off of Spotify. Oh yeah, over the the misinformation dispute with Joe Rogan. So huh. um, we we don't take one side or the other. We kind of just like cover the issue. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's. I mean, I understand. I get both sides. I I don't yeah. have the freedom of speech I thing. Do. I'm a firm I'm supporter of. It's the like. <laughs> Hey, by the way, here's these three hour long clips of him freely dropping N bombs. Like, that's a problem mm -hmm. <laughs> on yeah. any platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, though, that's not enough to to get rid of him, <laughs> especially with uh, for his... Spotify. No, absolutely uh, not. They'll yeah. just pay whatever fines they need and move on. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you uh, put a hundred million dollars into something, you're going to so, really. But, but Spotify, Spotify you. lost one point two billion dollars in the market because of that dispute holy so, shit. yeah oh my god that stings you don't think they're gonna bounce back though billion like of course yeah their, their stock's gonna go right back up so they're still not happy about it <laughs> <laughs> no no holy shit eh wow yeah and one news cycle goes past and that all goes away that's all the woke, yeah. woke mob woke mob yeah cancel everybody all right. Um, all right, Dora, were you cool. looking something up? You were going to tell us something? If not, yes. I'll let you get out of here. Oh, so Mysteries Abound is one of the shows that started with us. They're okay. like a, a yeah, mystery show. I can send it in the email if you guys want to check them out. But, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll send you over the the picture and I will, oh, yeah. um, I'll, I'll send you and then just send me a time that you want to meet in order for me to walk you guys through. For sure, for sure. Amazing, yeah. sounds good. That is awesome, man. I'm really glad we did this, cool. Dora. It's been a lot yeah. of fun. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to be found or not. Some of our guests don't want to be not because they're criminals. They just don't want to oh. be found. Oh, <laughs> but if you do let people know where to find you on social media and everything. Sure. Um, my LinkedIn is Dora Bloom. And um, that's about the only place that you can find me. <laughs> I, I, I'm private everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. You stay hidden. Yeah, I'm, I'm hidden. Good. It's way easier that way <laughs> uh, yeah it's at dora bloom on instagram if you really want to find me and i have to accept your follow though so yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm coming dora I'm yeah, coming. yeah. oh it's like you guys can follow me i'll accept you <laughs> we had a uh, we had a lawyer on back in november a criminal defense lawyer and at the end they said all right sharif let everyone know they can follow you or find you and he was like no. If people want to find me, they can find me. And if you want to find me, probably not like on a good way. He's a criminal defense lawyer. <laughs> if you're looking right. for him, something's not right with your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right, cool. Cool. So Amy, all good yes. or all good. And Dora, we cool. can see something else. No, that's it. Thank you so much, guys. So nice well, to meet you. you. Yeah, thank you. And we're definitely gonna be talking more. I, I'm excited awesome. about it. Yeah, and the studio too. Let me know about the studio. Yeah, definitely. For an hour trip down the road, down the 401, yeah. for sure. No, we'll take over. You don't even know. We'll take yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be our shape 45. No I'm smoke, saying. no smoking in the studio. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I've got That's patches. easy. I've got patches and gums. We're good. I got patches and gums. Oh, God. All right. For Dora Bloom and talk to you. Amy Barton, Kirk Kasatsky. I'm Jay Kelly. This is Building That Town. We out. Peace. Building downtown, building downtown, building downtown, building downtown.